Shalom. Giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing his doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel, who were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, um, was uh, I want to do a response to Shapa of the Twelve. This brother's always making edifying videos. I watched his video and decided to uh, sort of expound on it. I'm going to cover some of the same points, but, um, you know, this guy, Jay Dyer, um, I don't know if he's a Christian or Orthodox, J double O. I don't care. He doesn't know the Bible. He fancies himself to be a scholar like the rest of these Christian idiots. Okay. They don't know the narrative. They don't understand the narrative of the Bible. They try to intellectualize every damn thing, right? So that gives them credibility in terms of knowledge base. And on the other side of that, they try to discredit us, number one, by calling us the black Hebrew Israelites, okay? Whenever these devils use that term, um, that phrasing, to describe us, right? They are trying to discredit us with the word black because it's a negative, it's a negative, uh, there's a ne negative connotation attached to the word black okay and that's already been established so anyway he's attacking uh captain tazariak of iuic if i'm not mistaken um which i don't support those guys i think they're demons you know a lot of what they teach is false false doctrine all right just like gocc iuic isupk all right but the fact of the matter is, is that this devil is attacking um, his vocabulary. He's attacking uh, his pronunciation of words. And um, this is how they go about these Edomites. This is how they discredit us. They try to. Okay. But we see right through it because you're attacking um, things that are completely irrelevant. All right. And what you should be uh, dissecting is the doctrine that we, we teach okay and not all Hebrew Israelite doctrines are the same okay and that's another distinction that needs to be established because uh, the apostles and the elders of great millstone teach the hundred percent truth all right according to the scriptures and this idiot and the rest of these Christian numbskulls cannot debunk anything that we've that we teach Okay, I'm not a part of Great Millstone, but I follow the teachings because they're right. They're 100% right. So without further ado, uh, let's listen to uh, what this uh, devil has to say. Whenever you want, but kind of the whole point of the debate is kind of based off the whole Jewish... Yeah, so don't come in here muddy and say that's white privilege. See, Randy, that's that white privilege. Hold on, hold on. I wanna, uh, no, it's not white privilege is not having equal... Privilege I was talking equal. About. Equal response See, to you is not black privilege. laughing because he know I'm right. That's that white privilege. Randy's for a three-way debate. What was it that it, I said it translated from? How does it? How does this avoid the historical fallacy? Because when you ask me why do we follow the king, it's ass. I A S K. There's no X. It's ass, hey, not ants. What is a fallacy? Can you, can you tell me what a fallacy debate. is? Because I don't think you can debate if you don't know even know what that is. Well, clearly. You can't debate if you can't. So you don't know what a fallacy is. So you don't know what a you, you don't know the. Well, I know what a fallacy is, and I'm going to use one. In ex I'm going to use a word in a sentence. The Edomites getting salvation is a fallacy. Heathen nations or non-Israelites getting salvation, especially the Edomites, is a fallacy. How about that, Jay Dyer? How did I use that in the sentence? Was that was that pretty uh, pretty well used? I would say so because you Edomites are going into slavery and you're going to be destroyed pursuant to the book of Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18 after you serve your thousand years of captivity. How about that, devil? Basic rules of logic in your today. Here's what I like to do. What's a I'm fallacy? I'm read it for you. What's a the fallacy? Historical fa I'm about to read it. Oh, you, you Googled it. <laughs> you, you Googled it. All I'm about to do is read it for you. Because you Googled it. Of you didn't know. Of a word. Uh, what's a, so you yapping while you Google it. it. 
Ford. Keep yapping and keep Don't Googling. Can you Google fast enough? You see keep yapping. I want everybody to pay attention. So you think Greeks? No, no, no. If I say the word Greeks, it doesn't refer to a person who's a Greek. Here's That's how dumb you are. Saying. That's how dumb this is. What I said. Here's, here's my does, do the word, does the word Greeks not refer to a Greek? Does the word Greeks? No, it doesn't. Oh, you're that dumb. Greek, you, you are, this is the dumbest argument I've ever had in my life. Now, pay close attention to the context of the word Greek. We're going to look that up. Uh, the brother Shapa of the Twelve is going to uh, research or look up the word in the dictionary, the Blue Letter Bible, and it's going to uh, define exactly from a biblical standpoint what the word Greek actually means. This idiot clearly doesn't know what it means. And he fancies himself on being this Bible scholar, but he's sitting here uh, you know, refuting the term Greek because we know, according to the scriptures, the Greek is a Greek-speaking Jew in this context. That's what it means. That's the significance of the Greeks, okay, in the Bible. But this idiot and the rest of the Christians don't know that. It's, we're essentially arguing the same thing in this context because his religion doesn't exist if my premise is... It's not a religion. Whatever, whatever you fuck. Right, this is an actual. This is a literal lunatic. This person doesn't even. Yeah, like, this is what I'm like, it's like. This is like, legit. I want you to pay attention, right? Because when I name, you don't even know what the words you're saying mean. I don't want to say anything because I've been called a lunatic. You are a lunatic. I haven't been called. You ought to be called a lunatic. And, and again, this is what these devils do. They cut you off. They never let you finish your point. They try to discredit you by attacking the way you speak by attacking your belief system instead of allowing the scriptures to come out because all Israelites, all right, in these debates, we bring out the scriptures to substantiate our points, okay? And when the devil doesn't allow that to come out, they're trying to hide something, okay? Boxing, I appreciate you saying that. The linguistic part, I wouldn't, I would, me, Adam Tazaria, I wouldn't say that I'm using a linguistic argument because just like you said, you're not fooling in it. You literally sat here arguing linguistics. Like, see, all right, I'm out. This is, I'm out of here. This is the, the dumbest box. thing I've ever been a part of. This is so stupid. Oh, my gosh. Dr. Batches of $1. Black Hebrew Israelites have circumcised their brains instead of their foreskin. It seems to me that... They and again, we're not black Hebrew Israelites, okay? The Israelites consist of Negroes, so-called Latinos, and Native Americans. And there's even... Israelites that look like this devil right here, okay? They may look like them, but in the spirit, they are Israelites, okay? And their bloodline can be traced back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? If they have an understanding of this truth as it relates to the scriptures, then they're Israelites because the only nation of people that's going to understand the doctrine are the Israelites, okay? So you have to be an Israelite in order to understand this doctrine all right this is spiritual okay you can't give a carnal explanation to spirituality all right that's just not the way it works jay dyer let's finish and wrap it they up forgot what muhammad said about uh people of black descent yeah, who cares like what muhammad said he's not a christian he's not a, an israelite all right he's, he's he worships a pagan god so who gives a damn? And this is, it just goes to show you how hateful and evil these demons are. You know, they'll get to quoting everything and everybody else, all right, instead of quoting the scriptures. And it just goes to show you that they know deep down that they're convicted. They know deep down that they're wrong. You're wrong, Jay Dyer. You're an Edomite. And you should maybe talk about who the Edomites are and what the prophecy says about your people, buddy. That's what you should be focused on. Okay? That's okay, because the Israelites are going to bring it out. We're going to bring out the 100% truth. We don't leave out or omit scriptures like you Christians. $85. Jay, I didn't know I was one of the people of the book. Oh, so Frankie D is a, a chocolate-toned uh, man. No, he's Mexican man. I didn't realize that black Hebrew Israelites include Mexicans either. So Frankie D, there you go, buddy. Hey, you barely made a cut, bro. Hey, hey, we trying to cut off who the people of God is, bro. Hey, dude, we got, we barely made the cut, man. Hey, you better get some guys out here. Because this dude, 
He's kind of got a little bit of dark, but not really. He might just be a suntan. This fool, hey, he might not make the cup, bro. Alright. Have your, have your fun. Make your jokes. Talk your shit. But the truth is going to come out. The truth is coming out now. All right, but there's going to come a day where you devils, you Edomites are going to have to acknowledge this truth, okay? Because there's prophecies that say that you devils are going to pay for the sins, okay, of your forefathers, all of you, all right? There's prophecies that have not been fulfilled, all right, concerning you going into slavery. This is how you're going to have to pay your, your, uh, your debt back to the Heavenly Father, okay? And blood, sweat, and tears, Right? To all the evils that you committed against the Israelites, everything is going to be turned on to you. All right? Righteous judgment. All right? Which means you're going into slavery. Anyway, so let's fast forward to, uh, let's see, I want to say it's at the seven minute mark. Because he's talking about this word Greek as if it means Edomites. See, when people hear the word Greek, in the Bible, they automatically think Edomite. They look like him, right? Well, no, you got to understand the context of the word. All right, and this has everything to do with the scattering pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's all about the curses. All right, and this is why they ended up being called Greeks and Romans, okay, and Americans and Babylonians and uh, uh, Egyptians because of the scattering, because of the curses. We sinned against the Lord, and he pronounced those curses upon us and scattered us into all nations under heaven, as the scripture says. Okay? So you're not always going to be able to maintain your Israelite heritage being born in foreign lands, especially after generations and generations, you know, of, uh, you know, mingling with these heathens that you're dwelling about. All right? So let's go to, uh, let's see. And it's going to prove our point, okay? And they don't look up words. They don't understand the importance of looking up words because they think they have automatic credibility based on their skin color. This is how these devils operate. Greek power. Look, see? With the spread of the Greek power and influence, everything not specific, specifically Jewish was called Greek. Greeks contrasting with the Jews are simply non-Jews, so-called because of the prevalence of Greek institutions or the culture of Greek. Stop right there. The Greeks contrasted with the Jews are simply non-Jews, so-called because of the prevalence of Greek institutions and culture. Let's continue. Even, even came to be used in the sense of anti-Jewish. Second Maccabees, right? You get you. Uh, we gonna get over in there to the Second Maccabees, but look at this right here. Isaiah nine twelve, the Septuagint reads thus: Helen, Helen, Helenus, for Palestine, Philistines, but we are not therefore justified in assuming a racial connection between the Philistines and the Greeks. Further, the light of the at the at the graph of the Mediterranean, where is that? One second, it's in here. Go down, New 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 ah, Testament. There it is. In the New Testament English version, the Bible attempts to distinguish between the Hellenis, Hellenis, which is rendered Greeks, and the Hellenista, which is rendered Grecian or Grecian, Grecian Jews. Jews. Grecian or Grecian Jews. We're going to stop right there. Let's read that again. In the New Testament English versions of the Bible attempts to distinguish between Hellenes, which is rendered Greeks, and Hellenista, which is rendered Grecians or Grecian Jews, who were also referred to as Greeks, okay, in the Bible. Or in the revised version margin, Hellenists. These latter were Jews of the dispersion who spoke Greek. Therefore, if they're speaking Greek, okay, Greek-speaking Jews, they're likely going to be called Greeks because they're dwelling amongst these Greeks. They're acting like the Greeks, 
okay, to speak in the Greek tongue. They're taking on the, the customs and philosophies of the Greeks and the culture of the Greeks. This is what they're going to be referred to. So the Bible is essentially saying, Apostle Paul in the book of Galatians, there's neither Jew nor Greek. We're not going to make a distinction between the Greek Israelites or the Greek speaking Jews, all right, as opposed to the Israelites who know they're Israelites. They're born in Israel, right? They maintain their identity. So we're not going to make a distinction because we're all one. We all are Israelites. We all believe the same. That's what that means. It doesn't mean, uh, you know, there's no distinction between Israelites and heathen nations. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. But see, you Christians won't allow this kind of truth to come out. Now, instead, you attack, you know, things that are completely irrelevant, like someone's vocabulary or speech or the doctrine or belief system, as opposed to objectively, you know, looking at this, these definitions that tell you clearly that when Christians speak about Greeks, they're taking it out of context. They don't understand the meaning of, of the word Greek, nor do they understand the context in which it's used. Okay, context is everything in the Bible. All right, so he's just been debunked. J. Dyer, try looking up words in the blue letter Bible for a change, okay? Because you're making yourself like a, uh, look like a complete ass. All right, you're ignorant. You're a bigot and you're, you're angry and you're hateful because you don't understand the scriptures like we do. Okay? You're an Edomite. Salvation is not for you or your people. All right? You're going to be destroyed when the Lord comes back. He's going to exact the revenge on your people for all the atrocities, the hatred, the oppression that you committed against our people. Okay? Like it or not. Let's look up the word Hellenist from online. Who are the Hellenists and the Hebrews? As referred to in this passage, the Hellenists are the Christian converts, Israelite converts, among the Jews who had returned to Judea after having lived abroad in Greek world. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Despite being Jewish, and we're not fucking Jewish, all right? We're Israelites. Despite being Israelites, the Hellenists had adopted Greek cultural elements and spoke Greek. The Hebrews in this verse are the Christian converts among the Jews who were born and raised in Israel. So these are Hebrew Israelites that were scattered, again, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know, these curses, you Christians want to ignore and act like they're, they're, they don't exist. You want to act like they've never been... Um, you want to act like that the Israelites were never cursed and that these curses disappeared and the Israelites disappeared. I mean, you people are just, you're like a bunch of petulant children, man. Because you don't understand the scriptures. You're angry because you know we're right deep down and you can't beat us with the scriptures. So you have to use straw man arguments and you got to attack us. Okay, attack things that are completely irrelevant about our character and our person okay all right so let's look up the word fallacy fallacy a false notion a statement or an argument based on a false or invalid reference incorrectness of reasoning or belief erroneousness all right so we understand what the the, the term fallacy means so when we say that you Edomites and the rest of you heathen nations um, getting salvation is a fallacy that's right on that's spot on because the scriptures say you're not going to be delivered you're not going to be saved salvation is for the Jew as the scripture says the Israelite okay all right so let's go to uh, we're gonna go to the book of Romans and just cover the word Greek and put it in its proper context this is Romans chapter 10 verse 12 for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. And I explain that. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches upon or on all who call on him. All right. And then Paul said, remember, his hope for Israel or wish for Israel is that they be saved. Right. So how is this talking about the heathens? It's not. 
I ask then, Romans chapter 11 verse 1, has Yahweh rejected his people? By no means. For I, myself, am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahweh hath not, has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he appeals to how he appeals to Yahweh against Israel? So, no. No. This is talking about the remnant of Israel. And these Gentiles being grafted in are Israelites that those Greek Israelites who are also referred to, not only are they referred to as Greeks, they're also referred to as Gentiles. Okay? And they're going to be grafted in. Okay, and grafted in is another term for adoption. All right, so let's look that up in the King James Version here. And I often bring out uh, Romans chapter 9 because it tells you everything you need to know about salvation and who Paul was actually advocating for, ministering to. All right. Damn. I thought I put in the KJV. There we go. Solicitude for Israel. Why isn't this mentioning Gentiles? Okay, because those Gentiles are Israelites, and we know that. Right? Just like these Israelites in Romans, they're referred to as Romans. Right? And in Galatians, they're referred to as Greeks. We know these are these Romans are Israelites. Verse 3: For I wish I could for I could wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are Israelites, not Edomites, not Ishmaelites, not heathens. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Let's stop right there. This is talking about the adoption. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Okay? Israelites. That adoption pertains to you. What else pertains to you as Israelites only? The glory of the kingdom of heaven, the covenants, the old and the second covenant, and the giving of the law. And the service of Yahweh and the promises. Why don't you Christians ever bring out this scripture? Huh? Because it's clearly only talking about the Israelites. Explain that, JJ. Explain that, Jay. Because right now, buddy, you're not looking too good. Your doctrine is false. Okay? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law? And the service, you can't even serve the Lord because service of God is only for the Israelites. You just read it, right? And what else? And the promises, the promises of the kingdom of heaven, the promise of everlasting life. That's only for the Israelites. What else is for the Israelites? The Savior, the Messiah, who only came for his people. Verse 5 tells you that. Who are the, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Yehoshai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, came. So this is saying he only came for his people, the Israelites. All right? So where do you get Greeks being heathens, being saved, when the Messiah clearly only died for the Israelites? Hmm? Those Greeks, the Romans, the Galatians, the Corinthians, the Colossians, they're all scattered Israelites or Israelite foreigners. Okay? That is the context what this is talking about. Okay? And which it's talking about. Let's fast forward to 11 here. What does it have to say about all of Israel? Why is it why does it exclude the heathen through omission? Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. This is Romans chapter 11 verse 26. And so let's start at 25. For I would not brethren Paul already, Apostle Paul already described who his brethren were in, in the book of Romans 9. That ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And those Gentiles are the Israelite foreigners, those Greeks, those Romans, those Colossians. We just explained it. Okay? And this is the point. And so, therefore, all Israel, these Gentiles are all Israel, shall be saved. This is the context, right? You can't just say, oh, well, no, it's just talking about 26, but this is something completely different. No, okay? This is explaining 
how all of Israel with these Gentiles are going to be included in all of Israel being saved because those Gentiles are in fact scattered Israelites. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, that's the Messiah, and shall turn away uh, uh, ungodliness from who? The heathens? The rest of the world? No. Jacob, the Israelites. Okay? So if he's only turning away transgression and ungodliness in Jacob, then where does that leave the heathens? Where does that leave you Edomites, Jay? You're left out because you're not a part of this. You never was and you never will be. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. He's taken away our sins with the Messiah that he sent. Our big brother, Yahawashai, the Messiah. Okay? So the covenants, we just read that in the book of Romans chapter 9. Paul said that the covenants pertain to the Israelites. The service of God pertain, pertain to the Israelites. The adoption pertains to the Israelites. So if the adoption pertains to the Israelites, can other heathen nations be grafted in? No! Because it only pertains to the Israelites. And they're being grafted in again because they were cut off. They were called Gentiles and Greeks. The curses are responsible for this. Okay? So y'all don't want to have this discussion. You just want to make straw man arguments and make fun of us and talk your shit. But you're the ones that are looking like fools. Okay? You can use your big words and your large, broad vocabulary and make it sound like you're smarter than everybody else, but you don't know the scriptures. You don't. And this is why you're using your tomfoolery to sort of minimize, you know, the, uh, the notion that you, know, you guys are uh, not, you're not the people. And you're not eligible for salvation. Okay? So, it's, you know, wh whatever, man. You can make all your jokes. You can talk your shit on your videos, all right, make it and, 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 you know, appeal to your audience with your humor and comedy. That's fine. That's fine. But deep down, you know that you are an Edomite and there's no salvation for you devils. Jay, how you like that, devil? Let's go to the book of Malachi and you'll see what I mean. The Lord has nothing but hatred for the Edomites. Your people, Jay. Yahweh's love for Jacob. Well, if he loves Jacob, where does that leave the, the heathen nations, especially the Edomites? The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Because of these curses, the slave, uh, slavery and oppression. Our people's wondering, okay? Or Malachi's wondering, man. It doesn't seem like it because of these curses. And we've been under so much affliction and oppression. But anyway, was not... Esau, Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains waste, or his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, Jay. Jay, did you read that? Why don't you go read that for yourself and see what that says? And you can try different translations. It says the same thing. The Lord hates you devils. Okay? You pompous, arrogant, prideful devils. Okay? The Lord hates you. And he calls you wicked. You're the border of wickedness. The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Jay, did you read that? Why don't you make comedy out of that? Huh? Is that, worth fun? is that worth making fun of? I think it is. Why don't you make comedy about that? Make jokes about that because you are the devil that the Bible speaks of. You are the wicked that the Bible speaks of. On second thought, that's not a laughing matter because that means you're going to be destroyed. Okay? When the Lord fulfills your, when you fulfilled your purpose, the Lord is going to destroy you people. Pursuant to the book of Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18, Jay, did you know that? Huh? Any of his followers? See, the Bible is clear about who the Lord loves and who he hates. All right? That concept of universal salvation is bullshit. Okay? So you could shove that up your, your little tight little booties and uh, 
yeah, you gotta you gotta eat this up. You gotta accept it. You can't ignore it anymore because it's about you. All right, I'm talking about you not being eligible for salvation. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews because it talks more about you Edomites, Jay. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, the progenitor of the Edomites, Jay, if you didn't know that, who for one morsel of his meat, of meat sold his birthright to Lachia. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Uh-oh, Jay, it looks like you guys are in trouble, buddy. Huh? Why don't you make some comedy skits about that? Because you are clearly going to be destroyed by the Lord. You are clearly hated by the Lord. Let's go to the book of uh, Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Why didn't it say the Lord God of Edom or Ishmaelites or, or Adam, uh, Ammonites or Moabites? Because the Lord is not dealing with any of you heathen nations. For he hath visited and redeemed who? His people, the Israelites, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us. And that's the Messiah who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So he's not the horn of salvation for you heathens. J, in the house of his servant David, and he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets and the men of today, starting with the men, the apostles and elders of great millstone, which have been since the world began. So before the world was even created, all right, this was um, actually written by the heavenly father. The story was already created with the outcome already determined. That we should be saved from our enemies. Who's our enemies, Jay? Huh? Jay Dyer? You Edomites. You're our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. You do hate us. That's clear. That's why you're always running your mouth and trying to discredit us and trying to call us a hate group. Okay? You're the enemy of righteousness. You're the enemy of the Israelites. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. And we remember who the covenants are for, according to Apostle Paul, right? In the book of Romans, chapter 9, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. And holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And let's jump down to verse 77. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Wow. Jay, did you realize that the Bible said this in the New Testament in the book of Luke? Huh? Knowledge of salvation unto his people. Not to you Edomites, buddy. This is why you're ignorant. You don't understand the scriptures. Through the tender mercy of our power, whereby the day spring... From on high hath visited us. Verse 79. To give light to them. Who's the them? The Israelites. That sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Alright. To give light. This gospel. To them that sit in darkness. We've sat in darkness because you devils. You Edomites. Have hidden the truth from us. Alright. You knew we were the people of the Lord, the Hebrew Israelites, but you started calling us black. You started calling us that, right? To this day, you're still calling us black to conceal our identity, all right? But we've been given that light. We're not sitting in the darkness anymore. We are the hopeful elect, okay? And in the shadow of death here in America, Babylon the Great, to guide our feet into the way of peace through this gospel starting with the apostles and the elders of great millstone, teaching this gospel, okay? As the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert, deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Okay, so this is all about us, Jay Dyer. What do you got to say about that? Why don't you bring out some more edification, buddy? 
Well, you can't edify because you don't understand the narrative of the Bible. Okay? See, you're obsessed with trying to sound smart and look smart to your people. But we know. We see right through your bullshit. Okay? So again, you Edomites getting salvation is a fallacy, Jay Dyer. <laughs> oh, sucks to be you, doesn't it, boy? Shalom. Giving all praise to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai.